Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Connecticut is home to 10 meat processing facilities. All are small to medium size, mostly family run facilities. Additionally, we are home to 48 beef cattle producers, according to the State Department of Agriculture. When talking about beef supply chains and processing, facilities like these are often left out of the conversation. While Congress has appropriated millions to the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program to help producers, including beef cattle producers, only 8.1% of Connecticut farmers were eligible. This is a negligible amount, even, compare, even when compared to other small Northeastern states. These farms and processing facilities also were affected by the adverse conditions of the past year. Our producers also had to adapt to the sudden lack of demand from commercial, institutional, and restaurant purchasing. They also had to address the labor concerns caused by COVID, and they also had to adapt to the dropping demand in exported U.S. meat. So my questions will focus on those small to medium-sized plants that I just mentioned. Dr. Jacobs, during the pandemic, we saw an increase in consumer demand for beef directly from the producer or small local butchers. Are there signs that this opportunity will remain as Americans return to a more normal economic activities? And what technical assistance, workforce development, and other capaci capacity building is required of small to medium-sized producers to ensure they can meet food safety standards, consumer performances, and stay competitive? Thank you for that question. Um, you know, I think, first of all, I think support for that, for support for that system um, needs to recognize that 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 type of small and medium scale processing allows producer to be closer to consumers. And although I don't have the data and can't comment on that, your question about whether or not we've seen consumers return to their pre-pandemic purchasing um, the food away from home versus food at home and where they're getting their beef, my suspicion is that we are going to have many consumers um, will remain purchasing their animal products directly from farmers or small processors. I think part of that will stick. How much of it, I, I can't comment on that. And I'd be happy to look into that further to see, to see what has remained. But you mentioned what other ways can we support this? And I wanna to comment too about and introduce this idea of the USDA's um, efforts to provide funding and capacity. I think what's important here is to do the things that you mentioned, which is instead of necessarily offsetting capacity costs, work on the things that are also cost to the input in beef processing, such as labor development challenges. Um, also, challenges are related to meeting regulations and the differential impacts that may have on small producers and small processors relative to the very large ones. Um, loan guarantees could be an important part of this overall package. So I think, you know, what I would encourage is to look at the more indirect investments that can benefit our, our producers, our livestock producers and their processors. Um, I'm glad to hear that there are small local processors that are doing well and I hope that they continue to. And I might encourage those that are family owned to consider thinking about a model in which they coordinate, in which they consolidate. And maybe there's an opportunity there for joint processing capacity, shared capacity um, that allows them to scale up. Thank you. You mentioned it briefly, but can you just touch upon um, what are the benefits are ha of having more local and regional um, processing options where uh, they're right next to their consumers? The benefits are options for consumers. The benefits are flexibility. You know, when you have challenges in larger scale processing, even though our, as I understand it, our small and medium scale, we don't have enough of those to pick up slack when we have major disruptions at some of our largest processors, that local scale is important to the continuity of our food supply chain locally. Um, it's important to the local rural economies where those farmers are living and the processors are and they're paying wages and they're paying taxes. And so I think the benefits go well beyond what we see as profitability, quote unquote, profitability margins at those levels. The, and that's one of the one of the features I love about the cooperative model is that many of those benefits stay local and those benefits aren't just confined to profitability based benefits. Well, my time is almost up, so I won't have time for another question, but I agree wholeheartedly with everything you just said. And I know at least in Connecticut five, 
If you go to any restaurant, you go out to dinner, you know that that beef is from Connecticut when it is because it's fresh and people immediately identify the name of the producer that it can be attributed to. Um, thank you so much, Madam Chair, I yield back.